We arrived in Cody at our lodging for the next two nights, a Western Rose, which is located only a block and a half from Cody downtown on Sheridan Street. We met our hosts Brenda and Mark, or as Brenda calls him, Chief Talkalot. After settling in, we walked downtown to explore. We stayed in Cody twice before, in 2012 and 2014, but only overnight. So we had very limited time to take in all the sights. Cody is an old western town with big history. Just 84 kilometres from the eastern entrance to Yellowstone National Park, at the foot of the Absaroka Mountains, is Buffalo Bill Cody's namesake town. The intrepid western showman moved through this area in the 1870s and loved it so much he came back 20 years later to wrangle a town out of the rugged, rocky mountain landscape. The population's around 10,000, making Cody the 11th largest city in Wyoming by population. It sits in a valley at an elevation of 5,000 feet. Downtown Cody Historic District contains historically significant buildings, primarily dating from 1900s to the 1930s. The sandstone buildings constructed of locally quarried materials lend the district a distinctive western character. The sandstone and brick detailing of the facades represent a simple stylistic approach to commercial design. Today the buildings in the downtown Cody historic district represent a prosperous commercial area that grew in northern Wyoming at the turn of the century. Buffalo Bill Cody used his money and influence to encourage agricultural and commercial development in the Bighorn Basin starting in the 1890s. As ranchers prospered, the town incorporated in 1901 and became the heart of commercial activity for the area. The discovery of oil in Elk Basin, north of Cody in 1915 gave the town a new industry. During the teens and twenties, agriculture continued to play a dominant role in Cody's growth, but the influence of tourist dollars diversified and strengthened Cody's economic base. In 1915, a road constructed between the town and Yellowstone National Park's east entrance permanently affected Cody's development. The popularity of dude ranches and automobile travel beginning in the 20s helped to assure Cody's continued stability. Today, the buildings in Cody's historic district are still the heart of the commercial area and the solid brick and stone buildings physically illustrate the economic successes of Cody's early years. Summers are warm in Cody, with some heat spells pushing temperatures above 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius. Winters are cold, with frigid periods alternating with sometimes milder temperatures. Due to the aridity, snow cover is highly unreliable, with only 29 days per season, with one inch or more of snow on the ground. Cody enjoys about 300 days of sunshine per year. Because of the dry climate, the entire area is laced with irrigation canals, holding ponds, laterals and drops. The Buffalo Bill Dam between Rattlesnake and Cedar Mountains forms a large reservoir about 10 miles to the west of Cody. We settled in that night to the Proud Cut Saloon for dinner. What a feast. You wouldn't call it Since the turn of the century, rodeos and parades have been part of the 4th of July here in Cody, Wyoming. 90 years plus, starting officially in 1919, the Cody Stampede Rodeo has been held every summer. 2023 marked the 104th anniversary of Cody Stampede and the 89th anniversary of the Cody Night Rodeo performances. The Cody Night Radio is a unique and thrilling event that offers visitors a taste of the authentic cowboy experience. 
held in Cody it showcases the traditions and skills of rodeo in a lively and entertaining atmosphere. What sets it apart, it welcomes both seasoned professionals and amateur riders to compete in various events, including bull riding, barrel racing and team rodeo. Up there, the judges score the horse on either side, 25 from each judge. The cowboy can get up to 25. Perfect score would be 100. Here we go. Come on, cowboy. is uh, let's pay Alex off, great try, just came up a little bit short of an eight second ride tonight. So we're gonna ask you to do that for all of your contestants because they all, this go on the Good Rodeo Horse Nightlight. Buffalo Bill Centre of the West, formerly known as the Buffalo Bills Historical Centre, is a complex of five museums and a research library featuring art and artefacts of the American West, located in Cody, Wyoming. The five museums include the Buffalo Bill Museum, the Plains Indian Museum, the Whitney Western Art Museum, the Draper Natural History Museum and Stu's favourite, the Cody Firearms Museum. Founded in 1917 to preserve the legacy and vision of Buffalo Bill, the Buffalo Bill Centre of the West is the oldest and most comprehensive museum complex of the West. The 
Buffalo Bill section of the museum is a Western History Museum about the museum's namesake, as well as some of the biggest characters in the West, like Annie Oakley, Chief Sitting Bull, Pawnee Bull, and other members of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show. The inaugural museum opened in 1927 in a log cabin across from the current location. It was moved and reinstalled in 1968 and is now part of the five museum complex. The museum offers a wide ranging view of the life and times of William F. Cody as well as the Buffalo Bill character he created which made him the world's most celebrated person of his time. The museum showcases the fame and success Cody attained through his Buffalo Bill's Wild West show and addresses his influence on the economic and cultural development of the American West. Natural History Museum dives deep into the diverse plant and animal species of the Greater Yellowstone area. This fantastic display features interactive exhibits highlighting geology, old life and human presence in the Greater Yellowstone region. Videos, natural history dioramas and photography replicate the sights, sounds and smells of the area. Specimens of grizzlies, wolves, bighorn sheep, moose, elk and other wildlife are on display. The Plains Indian Museum explores the lives of Plains Indian peoples, cultures and traditions over hundreds of years. You can view timeless Plains Indian artifacts and check out how Plains Indian tribal traditions are being sustained and celebrated today. The majority of the collection is from the early reservation period 1880 to 1930. It contains artifacts primarily from northern plains tribes such as the Arapaho, Lakota, Crow, Cheyenne, Blackfeet and Pawnee. Cody Firearms Museum is my favourite museum of all time. Don't let the focus of this place dissuade you from visiting. The sheer volume and variety of firearms here is truly mind-boggling. Everything's beautifully displayed and in addition to the guns, there are related interpretive displays such as drafting, engineering and manufacturing. A major gun enthusiast could spend a full week in here and not take it all in. A casual observer will want to spend at least an hour, maybe two, to absorb at least the scope of this collection without delving into too many specifics. 
The Firearms Museum was founded in 1991 and completely redesigned in 2019. Counting firearms related objects, in addition to the guns themselves, the museum houses more than 20,000 artefacts that span hundreds of years. The collection includes firearms ranging from 16th century hand cannons to guns of modern manufacture. The core of the museum is the Winchester Repeating Arms Company factory collection, which was transported from New Haven, Connecticut to Cody in 1976. The collection has grown to include firearms from many other manufacturers. In here you can learn about firearms in the West, military use, physics, engraving and more, and experience firearms history in a way that informs your opinions and starts some meaningful conversations. That afternoon, cold beers in hand, Mark, aka Chief Talk a lot, and he really does, took us from his hotel, a Western Rose Motel, to the nearby desert mountain ranges in his side by side, and an adrenaline fueled adventure in the exhilarating playground of the Red Lakes area. With its off road trails, sandy washes, and rugged hills, he made this an unforgettable journey for us. The nearly 3,000 acre site is one mile south of Cody and thanks to a partnership involving off-road enthusiasts, the state of Wyoming and a generous private landowner, an area that has been unofficially used by off-road recreationists for decades is registered in the Wyoming state trails for off-road vehicles. Two open riding areas totaling more than 400 acres and more than 60 miles of trails including a single track are available for legal off-road use. We didn't see another soul whilst we were hurtling up and down ridges, ploughing through creeks and setting new land speed records for rough terrain. We did however spot numerous wildlife including pronghorn antelope. The pronghorn is the fastest land mammal in the Americas with running speeds of up to 88.5 kilometres or 55 miles per hour and believe it or not the pronghorn's closest living relative is the giraffe. The chief told us about his encounter the year before with a sole antelope, where over a period of a few months, the antelope became more curious and used to follow him in his side by side. Culminating in such closeness, they were virtually sitting, staring at each other for long periods, only yards apart. And of course, the chief was chugging on a beer during these awesome experiences. The views from these ridges were fantastic, with the Absaroka Ranges to the west, the Owl Creek Mountains to the south and the Bighorn Mountains to the east, where Brenda and the Chief have a mountain cabin. 
We were to travel through the Bighorn Mountains to Buffalo later in our trip with awesome roads through sheer cliffs and fantastic views complete with huge waterfalls. We had ridden over the Absaroka Range two days before from Yellowstone. The side by side that the chief took us in was a Polaris Ranger XP, an 82 horsepower four door off road machine that tackled the rugged terrain with ease, no matter what the chief threw at it. There is so much freedom in the US for using these vehicles, with many states allowing on road use and off road use not restricted to private lands. The Irma Hotel has an interesting history. For over a hundred years, the Irma has been a symbol of friendliness and good cheer, where people could relax and be themselves. Everyone from Colonel Cody to princes, Indian chiefs and cowboys came as they were to the Irma. The hotel was opened to the public on November the 1st, 1902. A grand opening celebration followed on November the 18th. Buffalo Bill spent $80,000 in 1902 on construction costs. He named the hotel for his youngest daughter, Irma, born February the 9th, 1886. The next day we departed Cody with a group of friends. We were all heading to Montana, but would split off from them on Beartooth Pass and we'd head to Livingston for the night. Join us on our next episode as we head back to Montana where we will showcase the beautiful towns of Gardner and Livingston.